In Chapter 34, we'll be taking a look at the evolutionary history of and features associated with vertebrates. Aside from echinoderms, chordates, a group that includes vertebrates, represent the second major line of deuterostomes. All chordates evolved initially in marine environments. Therefore, it shouldn't be much of a surprise that the majority of all vertebrates are in fact fish. As a group, chordates are defined by the presence of four unique embryological features. All chordate embryos exhibit the following four features, most of which are purely embryological structures. In other words, they tend to disappear as development progresses. In some lower chordates, some of these features may actually persist into adulthood. The pharyngeal gill slits, located near the mouth end of the developing embryo, may develop into the following features. In aquatic chordates, these gill slits may develop into filter feeding structures. In others, they may develop into gills. In terrestrial vertebrate chordates, such as ourselves, these gill slits may develop into the bones of the inner ear. In addition to the pharyngeal gill slits, all chordate embryos also exhibit a postanal tail. This feature lies posterior to the anal opening of the digestive tube. The postanal tail in most chordates is a purely embryological structure and does not persist into adulthood. In other chordates, however, this feature may develop into the following structures. It may develop into structures that provide propulsion. This is especially important to aquatic chordates. In terrestrial vertebrate chordates, otherwise known as tetrapods, this tail can serve to maintain balance while walking or running. The notochord is a flexible, fluid-filled rod that is found between the dorsal hollow nerve cord and the digestive tube of the developing embryo. Like the pharyngeal gill slits and the postanal tail, the notochord in most chordates is a purely embryological feature. However, in lower chordates, the notochord acts as the major support structure of the body. The hollow nerve cord, as its name suggests, is found on the dorsal or backside of the developing embryo. This structure often develops into the central nervous system. Here we can see the formation of the dorsal hollow nerve cord in greater detail. In a process known as neurulation, the ectoderm along the dorsal surface of the embryo comprises what is known as an ectodermal plate. This plate begins to fold inward, ultimately breaking away to form the dorsal hollow nerve cord. As previously stated, this feature will ultimately develop into the central nervous system. The infolding associated with neurulation, which ultimately gives rise the dorsal hollow nerve cord should not be confused with gastrulation, which, if you remember, is a stage of embryonic development involving an infolding to give rise to the three primary germ layers, the ectoderm, mesoderm, and endoderm. Previously stated, chordates as a group are defined by the presence of four embryological structures, the notochord, dorsal hollow nerve cord, pharyngeal gill slits, and a postanal tail. These features can be regarded as shared derived characters from a common ancestor. The chordates can be further subdivided into craniates. Craniates are chordates that possess 
among other features, a skull or cranium. Vertebrates are craniate chordates that possess a vertebral column. Vertebrates can also be classified based on the presence of jaws and paired appendages. As previously stated, craniate chordates are defined by the presence of a cranium or a skull. The evolution of a skull and associated structural and sensory features enable these chordates to adopt a more predatory lifestyle. The features of the skull exhibited by craniate chordates is due in large part to the presence of neural crest cells that form during the process of nurulation. These neural crest cells will ultimately give rise to bones of the face as well as the teeth in addition to the skin associated with the face as well as various types of nerves. Craniate invertebrates are those that lack a backbone are represented by the hagfish. Hagfish represent the oldest living group of invertebrate craniate chordates, and because they lack a backbone, it is the notochord that persists into adulthood in order to support the body. The skeleton of hagfish are completely composed of cartilage, and because the body lacks paired appendages, they are not very agile swimmers. In addition, the hagfish exhibit a very small brain and other sensory structures. Another defining feature of this group is the lack of a jaw. Organisms that lack a jaw are collectively known as agnathans. Instead of a jaw, the mouth is equipped with rows of teeth that allow the organism to latch on to prey. Because of a lack of a jaw, the hagfish is quite limited into the types of foods that it can consume. At some point during the Cambrian period, some craniates actually evolved backbones, thus giving rise to the first vertebrates. As we will see, this group evolved various features, allowing them to become much more efficient predators. Vertebrates exhibit a high degree of cephalization, which is the concentration of nervous tissue and sensory organs at the head end of the body. One of the main competitive advantages of cephalization is the ability to integrate sensory information rapidly. This allows the organism to detect and target prey much more efficiently. The evolution of a vertebral column, along with a cranium, gave rise to an axial skeleton. The axial skeleton and the support that it offered allowed the body to grow to relatively large sizes. The axial skeleton also served as a means of attachment for paired appendages, such as fins. This allowed the body to make very quick and agile movements while swimming, contributing to a very efficient predatory lifestyle. Vertebrates evolved a closed circulatory system in which the circulatory fluid, or blood, remains confined to a network of vessels. This allows for a quicker and more efficient flow of blood and therefore the delivery of nutrients and wastes throughout the body. This means of circulation allowed for a much more active and therefore predatory lifestyle. The line of craniate vertebrates are represented by the lampreys. Like the hagfish, lampreys are agnathans or jawless vertebrates. In addition to the lack of a jaw, lampreys also lack paired appendages, 
therefore they are not very agile swimmers. They also lack ossified bone. Therefore their skeleton is mostly cartilaginous. They exhibit a parasitic lifestyle, whereby using their jawless mouth, they attach to and siphon nutrients from their host. Some lamprey specimens, and although they do possess teeth, they do lack a jaw. So this really limits the types of food items that they can consume. All agnathans, whether they be hagfish or lampreys, cannot consume food items bigger than the size of their mouth, simply because they cannot tear and break down pieces of flesh from a prey item. Lampreys, as we can see, are external parasites latching on to a host and siphoning nutrients from their blood.